Let's ask three great questions and learn about how a team leader, real estate agent, manager, coach is making things happen in California, in San Diego, California. We're going to interview Tina King today. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome, everyone, to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 312. You can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, you are right. Miss Tina King back in the WBNL podcast studio. She's been a longtime friend of the show and actually of us before yes. there was a show. Uh, and we're looking forward to catching up with Tina. Tina, uh, you know, Tina is that the person that has always got something going on and it's always big and she's always excited about it. And I'm excited to hear about the mega, mega, mega team that she happens to be on now. So that's going to be kind of exciting. Let's go yeah, ahead and bring we're her gonna, on in. We're going to get somebody who's actively out there, not only managing a team and managing leaders of teams, but doing real estate. And we're going to definitely dive into challenges or what she's seeing with the post NAR settlement stuff. So let's bring her in. Tina King. Hey, hey, hey. There she is. There she is. And you are. You you got a, you got it all going on. You're touching all kinds of pieces of the real estate industry right now, right? Yeah, it's kind of a, a habit. I'm not gonna say a bad habit, but it's a habit. <laughs> <laughs> but you got the best of all worlds, knowing you, Miss Tina, and uh, you're out selling. But why don't you just bring your bay up to speed? And it's probably a way to introduce for folks that listen to us another approach to how to be how to do real estate without you know by yourself, which is really hard a lot of the time. And the power of what you're doing over at a real brokerage and and just kind of talk to us a little bit about that because I think there's something for everyone from someone who's new to someone who wants to give back to someone who's looking to not have to do it on their own uh, or just have a little bit of help and camaraderie in this crazy real estate world. So take yeah. it away. Yeah. So I've had an opportunity to look at things from a, you know, a 5,000 foot view being in the leadership positions that I've been in and in 31 years in the business and really kind of watching what has been evolving. And these companies like EXP and Real and some others that are coming online are bringing something a little different. So I'll full circle to that. Um, for new agents, mid-level agents, top agents, people looking to leverage, all of that opportunities are a lot more plentiful in today's world than it was when we first got in and we had our little glasses on and we're saying, let's go sell some houses. And we didn't even know why. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so as you're in the business for a while, you go, Oh, I need to build a team. Right. Or, and some a lot do, or I'm just a great solo agent or, but at the end of the day, you're still just selling houses. Right. Um, people building teams are looking for what, what are they looking for? They're looking for leverage. They're looking for that ultimate freedom that they got into it in the first place, right? They, that's at least my perspective and all these people that I've coached, I think I've coached, I don't know, maybe 3000 people or so in my career. And, and from brand new baby agent, just getting their license that day to all the way to, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm like been here so long. I don't know what to do next. So, yeah. um, so basically, yeah. So when I look at this, I just kind of want to examine this for a second is what I'm seeing on the senior level agent with, uh, let's just take a team, uh, for instance, real saw real good opportunity to help these teams. I started consulting with teams a couple years ago, and I would say 98.999% of them were not profitable. Right. And if I were to take away their own production, okay, they're not yeah. profitable. They're so individual. They yeah, they have 25 agents on their team. They have staff, they have tools, they have a building, they have whatever. And they literally, all they're doing is just keeping their nose above the water with their own production. What kind of business is that really at the end of the day? It's not, it's not. So what I see real doing with the opportunity and th what I've joined with is a, a, a team by the name of Premier Group. And we are a very large team. We're in 24 states where we've got, I think now over 230 agents and people coming on as of this morning. Um, to include wow. teams, and I'll get to that, Real Broker opened up their door to what's called a, a model called Pro Teams. 
And pro teams is for just that, a very large team. Now, I believe Premier was in a profitable situation. Um, our CEO, Dave Keener, is a very sharp man. He was able to retire at a young age. He sold a software company that he built, I think, a cybersecurity for millions of dollars. Um, and he's doing this. This is his passion project. And he's he's a, just a, a good soul. I spent some time with him in North Carolina just a couple of weeks ago and got to know him you know, sat with his family and broke bread at dinner type of thing. And we just really had a, an amazing time. Um, it's really important to know who you're in business with. So oh, no yeah. matter who you are out there, if you're lining up with someone as a solo agent who just wants to gang up with a friend and do some business to, hey, let's build a team like I went through, right? <laughs> and you got to know who you're in business with, right? And that's really important because otherwise it will end at some point and it won't be pretty. So I really, I, I spent the money. I went out there. Um, he obviously wants to reimburse me, but I spent the money to go there. Um, so pro teams is definitely where he went. Um, there, we're now plugged into uh, leadership opportunities within real and within premier group. Uh, we have leverage through their systems and our own. We have fellow follow-up boss. So does real. We have follow-up boss. We have fellow, we have um, our own custom app, which is just blowing up. It's just amazing. And we also have a lot of support. We have a marketing department. We have, so does real, right? So these things are kind of in tandem, which is very weird in, in some people's eyes. Well, why do you need so much? Right? Yeah. Well, you <laughs> Because you're no longer paying for that stuff. Right. And your agents are getting, massive amounts of training opportunities, massive amounts of tools to, to look at only a few tools. Cause you don't want people to be too confused, right. right? You mm -hmm. want them to really focus and go deep yeah. on stuff, but we do have a complete umbrella blanket that will cover every style of agent from new all the way to, by the way, we had two large teams join our team yesterday. Why are they doing that? Why they're looking for that opportunity for guess what? We also have ownership. Yeah. Every on our team owns it and they don't have all the expenses to go with it we have private stock we own buildings title escrow mortgage all of those things are happening for these agents and these team owners the other component that we have at real is that rev sh share component <laughs> now you're getting rev share from your agents on your team right you're no longer paying out your nose for your team member you're still able to support them at a very high level. And by the way, maybe take a vacation once in a while, right? Whoa. I think it's a perfect world. I really do. And I've seen this evolving over the last, uh, I've been with Real now. It'll be three years uh, in February. And just from, you know, the EXP time and, and all the evolving that's going on, this is what I see the movement of happening for teams, individuals, and uh, mentoring is through the roof. You know, we have places for new agents all over the place. So the so way that, it's... Can I just ask a quick question? So th this pro team is sort of like what we've always been coaching on with when you can build a team and you can have, and then you're with a company that supports teams, which is very important. Um, you can leverage all the tools and then your own tools, but this is this amazing, very organized approach to an expansion team because where, how many States and how many different like uh, leaders of teams are within this premier group? Yeah, so say? now we're, we're in 23, 24 states right now. Wow. I think we're opening up maybe a couple more. We've done a really great job going wide. We have maybe a couple states where we're going to go. right? So now we're going yeah. deep. And the way Got we've it. set it up is we have team leaders who are productive agents in each of those areas. There might be like in North Carolina, I think we have, I don't know, maybe eight. It's a big area, right? Eight, eight maybe team leaders with teams underneath them. So we have a full on attraction department that will help fill the coffer for our mentoring program, uh, for the associates, these team leaders have an opportunity to be a, a certified mentor with us. We have a, a mentoring uh, certification. Um, you can be a mentor if you're at a certain level agent. So there's opportunities for you to be a leader in our, in our company. And then, so these team leaders are also in production. They have weekly meetings. I have a weekly meeting with the leaders. Uh, we work on what are we, what are the changes, the NAR stuff, all of it, yeah. right? So all covered. And then now what we're doing is we're breaking off the team leader position into, okay, you're nurturing, you're helping mentor, you're leading your team. You guys are having social events. You're having fun. Every, the glue's there. Now we need someone who's going to grow deep. So now we're looking for growth leaders, right? And there's very select few on our team that are actually at that, at, at, of that mindset. It's a, it's okay. a specific mindset to be a growth mm -hmm. leader. 
Yes. Right. So there's a lot of great coaches on our team, a lot of great people helping. So besides mentoring and the coaching, how is the training delivered um, within this group? I mean, is the brokerage have training and then you guys have training? Is it online? Is it done in small groups? Just interested in knowing how, how that yes. is handled. So Real has a whole platform of, of training where the top elite agents in the company, it's a certain status you get to, and it's quite, quite a lot of production. They're able to go in and do trainings, which is a fantastic calendar full of great stuff. You can actually invite outside agents into that as well to a lot of the trainings. Mm -hmm. Same with our company. We have Zoom trainings uh, that we do. We have a, a Amy is her name. She just joined us. She's from California. She's our education director now, and she runs the mentoring program, the certifications, we have a checklist that agents go through. And then on the ground with the team leaders, they're helping them with the shadowing, the in-house trainings, Perfect. all those things, right? Pretty dialed in. That is really amazing. And then there's even coaching and training of the leaders and the mentors and certifications. So it's covered on all levels. That's correct. The Zumo story is the hardest part, getting, attracting agents and then getting them to get out there and do the work. <laughs> is, that the, yeah. is that always a challenge? <laughs> it's always the challenge. But I, I can tell you our roster is different than any company I've ever run. Our roster is full of what we call partner and senior partner agents. We do have associates, which are the newer agents coming every day. We've got, uh, I don't know, 80 or uh, 40 or so. I can't remember what the count is on the associates. Um, however, they do come, but our, our roster is flipped. So we do a massive amount of production. Okay, good. Excellent. So you're having fun with this, it sounds like. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, I love challenges. I love something new to to mold. And if it were just a maintenance uh, position, by the way, I'm not salaried employee. I am, I'm more of a consultant. Um, mm -hmm. I do still sell real estate. I'm trying to wean back on that and just go full on into this because I love doing it so much. Um, yeah. And so it's it's really fits me. And um, yeah, and I love the people I'm working with. <laughs> so, right. That's the key. That's a plus. Uh, so let's, sure. let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about that because I, I feel like it's been where Ben, like, what are we now? We're in October. It's been um, not even two months of this post settlement, August 17th. You know, even though it seems like most states started things earlier in August, we did in Nevada. I don't know. I can't remember if California rolled out the new forms and stuff earlier than the 17th. But what have you, can you just share? what you're seeing in the marketplace as far as how the commission, we can talk whichever one you want to first, sellers or buyers or whatever you've been doing. I just want to see if we can have a discussion on that because I certainly have been having some weird stuff go on with it. Um, and it just, you know, it's going to take a minute probably to educate everybody, but I just want to get your take on how is it going with the whole, when you're, let's start with the buyer first, because I really think mm -hmm. the seller part is easy than mm -hmm. the buyer. Yeah. How is that working for you? And, and for maybe agents that you're coaching. Yeah. So for me personally, I've always done the buyer rep agreement consultation. So that made it easy. <laughs> I tried so hard to teach it when I first moved to California, but it was like, don't talk to us about buyer rep agreements. <laughs> you know, right. and I embraced it at the time when I was there. So it was just a normal part of our business that we did. But we were all taught to say what got us into the lawsuit to begin with. We were all taught that way back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. It was right before I joined real estate that they were like, yeah, you tell them you work for them for free, you know? <laughs> so that's what we did. And it did help us with our business. Well, now it's just, it's a different conversation. It's yep. uh, me bringing, even upping my game of bringing more value to the table, helping them understand. And I think what's getting confusing, confused is the agents are confused. So therefore they're putting off an energy of, of unsureness and of being confused to their clients, right? To their buyers, to their sellers. And so really we have to get our mindset shifted and change our narrative, right? We're, we're using our old stories. Yeah. Yeah. We're using, yeah. It really is. And, and I think it's a much easier conversation than what people think. Follow the stinking form, right? Mm -hmm. You can just follow the, the form tells you basically what to do, obviously get some training. So you feel comfortable explaining it. Right. I literally did not delve into all the training because I didn't want to overwhelm myself with another change because change is the only thing that changes, right? Our industry is changing. The forms are changing. How do we get the forms we had before from lawsuits? Sure. That's, that's why our uh, uh, you know purchase agreement keeps growing because of lawsuits. 
So yeah. it just keeps evolving and changing. And we just have to pivot, right? Now, just is hard for a lot of people. So we have to really talk to ourselves about our narrative. Why are we doing this? What are we just really embracing the change, right? And and following the form and explaining to your clients with confidence. That, that's, that's things that are lacking right now that's causing the confusion is our confidence levels. It really is. You, you Have you run into a situation or through somebody on your team that where the buyer is like, I just... You know, so all the buyers want to ask the seller to pay the commission because what we've been talking here on the podcast is, in essence, as far as I'm concerned, and I think everybody else, the buyer was always paying for the commission because it was in the offer. It always yeah. was. And yeah. if a buyer was getting financing, they're financing the commission, if you will, because it was in the offer that they get they gave to the seller where the seller was able to pay the full commission for both sides, pay their own closing costs you know, pay off their mortgages and get their equity, right? Absolutely. So the, the, the language is different because it, and what we're all, I think what agents are having a hard time doing, and this is where the challenge I keep running into now is, is that there was always some offer of compensation, whatever that was. And that was the thing that everybody just accepted. And you might've done a buyer brokerage agreement, but it was like, look, the seller's offering whatever, and I'm okay with that. You don't have to pay me any extra, right? right. Now it's like, we don't know if the seller is going to, do that because what we're finding, we have listings and sales right now, and we've got sellers going, well, I don't want to pay that two and a half or three percent commission. Seems like everybody's asking for three percent right now, which is interesting because Very I right. think it's the character it's the what what I don't like about what's happened now is they have I feel like everybody that we get an offer on is asking for three because they're doing it like a term like a sales price and it's a negotiation technique. I'm going to ask for three. They're probably going to counter me and I'll settle for two and a half or 2.75 or 2.25 or whatever. Right. But here's what I, I want to get what you think. If I, I want someone else to talk to me about if they have a challenge with this. So what I feel is bad right now on this is if I sit down and you're my buyer, Tina, and I go, look, I'm 3% is what we're, is what um, I'm worth. And here's why. And here's my value proposition. Uh, because you have to, you can't go up, right? So you can negotiate down. Yeah. And correct. then in every particular situation, you're wanting me to get that covered by the seller, but you're also wanting 10,000 in closing costs. So now in essence, I'm competing with you to yes. be able to get my concession. So you don't have to pay it. And it's buyers are seeing it that way, as opposed to, well, if they just pay me one, you're going to pay me the rest and I negotiate to get you. What's the difference? It's all about the net to the seller. But sellers are going, Man, I only want to pay two. I don't want to pay that because what we haven't had yet is the people go, well, we're not going to buy your house. And until that happens, until sellers get to the place of like, oh, it's kind of like what it always was. It's just in a different place. And I'm not going to necessarily be able to sell my house unless I can negotiate all this. Um so we're, I'm not there yet. We're in the middle of everybody's negotiating the commission and we're competing. And I personally can't be the agent that goes, sorry, buyer, I got to get my X percent, which mm -hmm. means you're going to have to give up some of that concession or you're going to have to get the concession, but turn around and pay me. So, you know, do you understand? I'm having a bit of a moral dilemma because I believe there's agents going, I don't care that, you know, I mean, it's not that they don't care. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's like, I think there's agents out there that are like are going to do great and they're going to negotiate their commission. And that's the way it is. If you want to work with me, even if it means you don't get the best deal. And I'm uh, having challenges with that. And, oh, what, and, if, and if we, and then we're going to have people who come in and go, I'm cool. I'm not going to do a lot of work for you and I'll just take, you know, 1%. Right. And they're going to yeah. not be in business very long because you can't really live off of, being a discount broker, unless you just do so many more transactions and then the buyer suffers because they don't get anybody taking care of them. So I will stop ranting right now, but this is no, really you're not. It's, 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 it's completely it's, frustrating me to the point that I'm like, yeah. maybe it's time to retire. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, climb on board to ownership, right? Get leveraged, right? Step back out of it. This too shall pass. We have to go through the growing pains, but what, what are you experiencing? And what do you think? I mean, do you, Am I crazy thinking like that? Or are you seeing uh, this being negotiated as well so far? And or are people just going, yeah, no problem. Here's your commission. No. Okay. So here's <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So now we are we are the ones that are basically negotiating, like you said, with our buyers, which is really kind of a sad situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am of, of the belief, just personally, of I'm going to serve you no matter how much I'm getting paid. Exactly. 
but I'm, I'm not everybody's like me or you guys, right? Um, they're just not. And so there are people out there is like strong arm is how I see it is okay. You're going to have to cough up, cough up the 3% or they are, or we're going to have, you're going to have to pay the difference and oh, borrow it from grandma. I don't like that. I don't like the feeling of that at all. And the other thing on the negotiating side that I'm seeing is when they're writing in 3%, at least in my market, we have choices because there are multiple offers right now, still in a lot of cases, right? It's not a sleepy market at all. And so that percentage that's up there at 15, 20 grand or whatever it is now looks horrible to the seller's net <laughs> because now you're, now you're really not serving your buyer because now you're losing the house because of your the block of the commission that's in there, the amount that's mm -hmm. in there. And they have other choices. They have a 2%, they have a two and a quarter, they have who knows what else all over the board, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, I think we need to find some kind of, we can't stop that. It's just yeah. going to happen. And agents will either learn or they'll win or they'll lose. And buyers will learn, they'll win or they'll lose. And really, it's kind of like, I feel like it's a little bit of the wild, wild west. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and and, I, and this is going to take some time to play it out, but I don't want to be the cheapest person you work with, right. but I'm not going to promote that. And I'm not going to promote and push that I'm the most expensive one to work with. I, I just can't. I'm going to think, serve the client first yes. and I get paid for what I do. So I'm going to negotiate, navigate every single like I'm writing an offer for a buyer and I know it's a hot property, I'm going to scale back a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. going to make that look great for the seller. And it's going to include me figuring out scaling back my commission. Yes, mm -hmm. the buyer broker could be signed at 3%, but my notation is you're not paying me the difference. Yeah. So let's flip that and look at the seller side. So when you're going in representing the seller, how are you actually going in with the commission on that end? Seller commissions, as far as what I'm negotiating for my yeah, just right, right for your seller side, side. Yeah. You're representing the seller. Yeah, yeah. So right now, and I'm I I don't know that we're allowed to really talk what people charge or whatever. Are well, we? I always know? say what you do. It's not you know. It's like we all can say this is what I do, or you could just say ABC or whatever you want right. to. But I'm with you on that, right? Yeah. So what you I'm go in and negotiate your commission, yeah. what you're worth. You show your value. But do you have that conversation about? be prepared that most likely someone's going to come in and, you know, offer that. And do you do a net sheet? Let's talk a little bit about that. To yeah. okay. okay. So uh, let me just go in about what I do uh, when I'm examining a property and I know how long it's going to take to sell. I know what kind of marketing is going to take. Mm -hmm. I know how to price it. Uh, and if the seller listens to me, right. I, I think I've had two expireds in 10 years. Like, I don't know if that's something worth tooting my horn, but I'm pretty darn good about pricing. And I'm really good about getting them over asking in most cases. Now, market market weather will will dictate that too. Like it's, I'm no hero uh, in a lot of cases, but it, you still have to position it to get the attention. So if I don't see that as a complicated effort, when I look at the whole project, I look at this as a project. Yeah. Then mission is going to be lower than 3%. Okay. Okay. If I see it as a difficult seller that I'm willing still to work with. I see it as a really difficult property to sell. I see it as a marketing plan that I have to go above and beyond to spend more money. And I see what it's going to cost me and my expenses with my staff and my and the photography and all the marketing that has to be upgraded even higher than normal. My commission is going to be closer to the 3%. Got it. I look at it from a project standpoint. If I'm competing with other agents, I don't worry about that with commission. It's my service and my yeah. personality and my my tenure and all those things that I lean into. I don't talk about myself at all. As a matter of fact, most of my sellers don't even know what company I work with. <laughs> so it's really about them and what their situation is and how I can build a strategy that's going to help them get from point A to point B and they're willing to pay for that. Good. So that's not difficult getting the seller to just go, my commission is X. But now the conversation has to be like, and it's interesting because in very, and I can't remember what in California they have, but we don't have in our listing agreement anywhere where it says, what's going to be, you know, do you want to offer a co-op? Not even yeah. a question of, it just basically, we have a, a line that says, 
there may be the other agent may ask you and it will be in a separate agreement. It might be in the purchase agreement, which is how it is. So do you just have that conversation with the seller to get them prepared? And do you do a net sheet showing a potential co-op? I'm on, I'm on, I'm trying to get everybody to tell me what they do on that. Okay. No worries. Um, so yes, I do give, okay. So we have a disclosure about it, right? So, and we also have a, a conversation. It's not in the listing agreement. So yeah. um, what I tell them is it's just like anything else that we're negotiating. OK. And at this point and it is negotiable and it always has been negotiable. Yes, so, exactly. We say that now really well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, basically I give them uh, scenarios. I'll even maybe tell them stories or I'll talk to them about, hey, I expect to have at least five offers on this property, whatever that might be. Right. And so what I think will happen is we're going to see commissions from maybe 1% all the way to sometimes past 3%. We've got some very courageous people out there. And so what we're going to look at is we are going to look at your net because that's really what you're looking for. You're looking for your bottom line. So I keep them focused on their bottom line. Yes. You know, even when it comes to like, say, escrow fees, you know, every now and then a seller will call out and say, well, are they competitive? Because I'll talk about the escrow company or whatever, right? And it's like, you know, I have to show them that across the board, they're pretty close to the same on everything. My job is to keep them off of those line items, those detailed line items, not to hide them, but to keep them focused on really how I'm going to make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time to where they're going to be able to move to Idaho and be with their family, right? That's really where I keep the story. Um, so I don't want to get so granular on it, but they do need to be aware of it. And then we just talk about it as the offers come in. Like, here's what we have here. Here's your net on this one. Now, as far as net sheets go, for example sake, I'll say, I even just do a calculation on my on my calcul on my phone right there, I'll say, okay, so average is around, you know, 6% to sell, you know, 7% to sell your home, whatever, with all the fees and the escrow and all that. And what's your payoff? And then I'll take that out and say, yeah. usually within a few hundred bucks, here it is. And then I'll say, once we sign the listing agreement, I'm going to get you uh, three versions of a net sheet. I never used to do three. Now I do three. Cause oh, I'll I like do that. Yeah, I'll just do commissions and I'll, I'll do a few different things on pricing because you talked about on your podcast about the pricing and how, you know, a lower price, higher commissions and things like that. So at the end of the day, I don't really care what is what. I just want to get them that net that they're looking for. The bottom line. What's the bottom line? Yeah. And it doesn't matter what there. So you're preparing them for it and then your point is well taken. And that's where I think that it's going to get worse when it becomes more of a, when it's a property that's a seller market property, meaning it's beautiful, it's priced right, it's been renovated, it gets multiple offers. But when sometime in the future, past this election, past this, uh, you know, when we get into the fives, which I think will commit uh, interest rate wise, I think more people are going to jump back into the market. And if enough homes don't come on the market, we know what we're going to have. We're going to have another one of those. Every property gets lots of offers and this is where it's going to get weird and sticky. But you made a great point that I think we have to really help everybody understand. It's not that we, people get granular focus depending on who they are on. I need a price. Like I go buy a car. It's all about what I get for the price. They're not focused on the payment or some people they're focused on the payment. So when you, when we talk about the net, the net is important, but sometimes just knowing what's important to the seller. So the offer that comes in that gives them the other terms that they want, for example, being able to rent back for two weeks for free because they don't want to have to move twice. 100%. Maybe they're willing to give up a little of the net and pay a commission or pay concessions or whatever. So I think er this is where, where I think every transaction is unique, as you stated, is a project that involves what it's going to take to get it sold and what's the motivation of your seller? What, yeah. what is it that they Not need? That. Like you said, I just had one. Uh, she wanted to move in with her new husband and from South San Diego to North County. And she was just like so tired of living there. And, you know, she was willing to lay down a five, six grand to the right buyer with the right terms for her to be able to stay in the home for yep. a couple of weeks to move. And, and so there is some flex there and you have to just listen to your clients. Mm -hmm. You have to satisfy what it is they need. It's the same with our agents. We need to help them to achieve their goals and they need yep. to understand. We need to understand it's not the same path for everyone. So it's not um, cookie cutter anymore. It never really was. No. But now it's very, very specific and very good at negotiation skills and listening skills and the whole nine yards. Hey, why don't we, do, we're, we're, we we could talk forever. I want to jump into our ask three with Tina so we can oh wrap up because you just covered a whole bunch of great stuff with us. 
uh, keeping people motivated. Love the whole mega team. I mean, that's not even a mega team. That is like that pro team thing is really cool. Have to keep talking to you about that. But what are our ask three questions for? Yeah, I, I know we've asked this question for you know, these three questions to Tina before. So it'll be interesting. Actually, I have to go back and maybe splice ah, in for all okay. the answers. Okay, you careful know. how you answer these. <laughs> so let's see, Tina, what is currently holding you back? <laughs> well, you know what? My whole life flipped and changed in the last two years and completely started over from the forks and knives in my drawer to the car I drive. So um, nothing's really holding me back except for my narrative. If I have, I, I lost my old narrative pretty quickly because I know, listen, I'm 61 years old. I don't have time for the drama. I don't have time. You know, yeah, these NAR changes are there. Let's just go guys. Like I have yeah. the go, go attitude. I'm not going to waller in my loss of my, marriage of my home of my car crash of my i'm not going to do it anymore because when i was i wasn't moving and i was mm -hmm. more and more and more and more depressed and that's what happens to all of us we, we keep leaning into the victim mentality possibly or whatever that is so right now for me I, you're asking me at a really good time because my slate is clean and i'm looking forward into my future I'm meeting great people. I have new friends. I have this position that I'm super passionate about. I have, you know, my real estate business could be healthier, but I'm it, wherever your focus goes, that's where you go, right? You know, so I, I just really, um, I think the only thing really holding me back right now is just um, not organizational, but just really staying in a in a time blocked focus. It's more of a of a. I'm not. It's not even. A, it's kind of a habit. But it's because I did stop. I went dead on everything for a while. So getting restarted, regenerated, I'm working out with a trainer. I'm losing weight. I'm feeling good. I'm, you know, all those things are really moving in the right direction. And guess what? We all go through crash and burns in our, in our lives. Yep. We have to pick up fast and we have to keep going and we have to heal while we're in the air. We're building our airplane in our, in the air, right? <laughs> I love That's, it. And as, as, as a, another wise woman has been saying recently, you got to turn the page. You so got to turn go. that page. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Thank you for that. Turn the page. Speaking of, you said books, podcasts, things like yeah. that, right? What's, yeah. what's your inspiration? Any current inspiration to share? Well, it shifts. It shifts with whatever All you right. need in your life. And you know what? I love, love, love your podcast. I look into it because Jan and, and you guys are the some of the best um on on hands-on trainers uh been there done that doing it nows you're you know how to help every level of agent the, with the way you put it out there i just i learned so much from you guys so thank you for that i mean keep it going you guys have made a difference and you are changing lives and i tell everybody about you so that's thank one you. and then people like ed Milet and uh you know uh who else have, oh i think one of them that was on my list before what was what uh mel What's her name? Oh, the five minute lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mel Robbins. Yeah. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Five second. I see her. Five second. I see her on uh, on TikTok she, on her short videos a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the Hormozies, you know, about business and uh, geez, just I, it just kind of depends. There's been some self help stuff, learning about um, attachment styles and all these things that are out there now and what a narcissist is and what a, you know, and wow, I was in a relationship with one or not, you know, like, whoa, yep. wake up. Right. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, it, it Always matter. growing and learning, aren't you? Oh, Tina K. To do it, you guys and YouTube and, you know, it really is. And I've had therapy, you know, and all that stuff. So, you know, you throw it all in there. I've got a great, uh, physical trainer. And when you're in a physical state, like jogging or whatever, that's where you can really focus on making the changes you need to make, because it is a, it's a state of uh, your body's in a, a chemistry state. I don't even know what you call it at that moment where it's either you're wallowing in your old narrative and you're, you're actually digging roots deeper or you're refreshing it and you're looking at where you want to go next and you're awesome. building that as you're running. And that's a really good place. So guys get physical, get out there, get, take care of yourselves. That's so important. Get up oh. and get out. I oh, love you're talking energy. our language, girl. That's right. This is, <laughs> this is the Tina King that I love. So uh, here we go. Last question. Um, <laughs> you know, what, what's your best advice for entrepreneurs and agents and everyone to thrive now and into the future? Well, jump aboard of Premier Group. Jump aboard of Real. 
plug in, listen to those podcasts, get out and get some air, hike, run, take care of yourselves. Because also look at your books. Really, are you profitable? As a solo agent, are you profitable? Are you charging enough commission for what you do? I'm not saying go out and gouge the public. I'm saying, are you able to pay your taxes with that commission? Yeah. Thank right? you. You've got to kind of look at it from that perspective too. It's not a free service, right? We're not, we don't work for free. We have to feed our families. So you do mm -hmm. have to have some perspective there on where you're going to go. I think as the market changes, not to flip back to that, but I think there's going to be agents going, I'll just do it for free. Like seriously, because they're, they're like, want to get their client the house. Don't do that either. I've had so many agents giving concessions over the years that I had to coach them not to do that because it was right. a bad habit. Cause boy, people will like me more if I give them my, my commission. Right. We got to get, we got to clear that out. So that's one spectrum. And then you got the, you've got the greedy guys too. So girls as well, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So awesome. Thank you, man. I, thank you for bringing great energy and perspective. And it, what I got a lot out of today for everybody listening, I hope you heard the same things. I'm sure you got whatever you needed to hear from today, but it's to focus. It's where you put your focus is where all your energy goes. Right. And so if you really embrace that, then you can take responsibility for what's going on in your life, right? Absolutely. So, and, 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 you're, and you're bringing the energy of like, go do, take charge, work on whatever you need to work on to clear whatever needs to do, and then just get up and get it up, get going, right? And I've learned a lot from my personal experience. I'm not saying it's somebody else's fault here. I'm just saying I learned a lot. Okay. Yep. So everybody needs to learn from it and change your freaking narrative, guys. Get a new story. Yep. You still have your yep. core. You still have your character. You're going to grow from it. And you're just going to be a better person at the end of the day. And this NAR change is going to make you a better agent. So yeah, it is. Where can people reach out to Tina to learn more? Yeah, I was just going to. Thank you, Jan. Good sir. Yeah, welcome, sir. <laughs> I'm on Instagram at the real Tina King. Um, I'm also obviously in San Diego here. If my phone number, I don't know if you're going to put it in the show notes or whatever. I'm going to put everything in the show notes. We're going to put oh, yeah. everything about Tina's life in the show notes. I, I'm looking <laughs> forward to being there. Like, no Tina for a long time. So here we go. Go look. This is going to be a whole expose. I actually, had a, I actually had a stranger knocking at my door at midnight last night for the first time ever. So that was a little weird. But wow. that was That's scary. really creepy. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> I don't know if we'll add that to the show notes, but you can, speaking of the show notes, you can find all that over at wbnlpodcast.com. This was episode 312. We were so happy to have Tina back into the podcast studio, feeling so alive and energetic. That's a really good thing. So as Tina said, get up, get out, align, connect, prosper, and be freaking forever wandering, but not lost. I couldn't have said it better, guys. Bye. Bye. The best. Tina, thank Bye. you for being so... You are fun. Uh... And you know, so inspirational. You're always so awesome. But that you got me got. <laughs>